Welcome back to Investor Intel. I'm Peter Clausey. I'm confused today. I'm confused a lot of days. But today I have Tony Sklar from Ideonomics to help me figure out why I'm confused. Tony, welcome to the All show. Right. Thank you very much, Peter. It's a pleasure to be here. So I first heard of Ideonomics last week. I knew nothing about the company. I went to the website. I still know nothing about the company. So if you could help me out, explain to me the business model, the business strategy, where the growth's coming from. Ideonomics is a commercial electric vehicle enablement platform. We have a business model that is sales to financing to charging. We call that the S to F to C model. We will get you the best commercial electric vehicle at the best financial floated price. And we will find you the best prepaid charging to get your fleet up and running as soon as possible. A lot of investors are very excited about the EV market. They're looking at Neo and they're looking at Xpings and they're looking at Teslas. And those are great, fantastic companies that are really moving the needle in EV technologies and EV as a whole globally. But it's not going to move the needle to the best that commercial enablement will. To get a commercial fleet on the road. So why, why is commercial different from retail? That's a really good question because when you're a retail guy and you're walking person and you're walking into that uh, into that neo shop and you're picking yourself up one or a Tesla, you're either paying cash or you've got some sort of rate, right? And that's one, and you're personal and you're done. They don't offer financing, and it's very difficult to get done a finance rate on an electric vehicle because the majority of that dollar amount that the car is worth, the vehicle's worth, is in the battery, and that battery is either a removable or will degrade at a rate that maybe out is less than the life of the vehicle. So how do you finance something that doesn't have a residual value? Now imagine that you're a commercial fleet operator. What if you wanted to order 2,500 garbage trucks at $500,000 a truck? Let's just say there are some companies out there that, that announce some things like that. Great. Who's going to write that check? It's, it's, I would go to GE first is the first thing that comes to mind. We, you would. That's really great. Or, or, or another large organization of such that has the ability to float that type of commercial paper. What are you going to do when the battery to diminishes? Do you have a battery as a service program? Is there a swapping issue? What are you going to do with all that residual? These are the questions that the rest of the ecosystem hasn't answered because they haven't been able to land the plane yet on com delivering commercial vehicles. Enter Ideonomics. We have done it. We have been in it. And we understood two years ago when we brought out one of our first announcements that says we we're going to um, participate in the conversion of, um, of, uh, of buses in China to electric. And it sounded really great out of the gate. But where is the money going to come from? Well, in, Ch in China, I would turn to the Chinese government. For sure. Absolutely. But nobody just writes you a check, right? There needs to be a pool of liquidity. There needs to be the uh, 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 an ability for a commercial operator to go out and get some money at a rate because this is all very brand new. And those liquidity pools have only started to become set up because of ideonomics. Thank you very much, Dr. Bruno Wu, our executive chairman, who has been kicking in doors and making waves to get these things to land the plane on that. And the rest of the world hasn't caught up. So does Ideonomics run its own funds to fund these or are you sourcing capital? No, we are sourcing capital. We are sourcing capital. We do, we are a services platform. We participate in the sales, in the financing and in the charging. And we take our slices along the way. You don't have to go to Amazon to buy toilet paper, but you do because the whole platform works for you and you get everything delivered. You want to be able to get a commercial vehicle. You want a fleet of them. You want 2,500 of them. You want a thousand of them. You want 20 last mile vehicles. How are you going to get that done? You need a sales you need. A, yeah. Are you, is the company registered as a bank or with the SEC, or any special registration? So we are not an investment company at all. We are a services company. We, um, we are in the automotive and uh, um, industry and, and motor parts industry. So we own 51% of an electric vehicle manufacturer in, uh, in Southeast Asia, in Malaysia, called Tree Electric. That's our participation at that level in the OEM. Otherwise, in, uh, in China, who 
by the way, has a 10 year head start against the rest of the world in the EV space. At least. Has over four, yeah, has over 400 OEMs. There's some really, really great technology, but like technology, some of your viewers would understand the cell phone market when it first came into fruition, there was all sorts of cell phones and different chips and everybody was changing tech and the OS was sort of, you know, continuing to increase, but it was a little bit of a mess. Same thing is inevitably going to go on in the EV industry. And that's why Ideonomics is a great opportunity for investors to participate in the upside of EV without the risk of a single battery or a single vehicle or a... And I have a really, really, I got to use a really ugly word here. Would you consider the company a consultant? No, services. We will get you, we will procure you the best vehicle, the one that's right for your business at the best financial rate, according to what your risk tolerance and profile is, I'm gonna get you the best charging. These things are really difficult. You can't just run out and, uh, and buy a single vehicle like you can at Tesla, go home and plug it in. Great, what are you gonna do when you've got a thousand of them? You have a thousand buses that you gotta put on the road every day. You need to make sure that you've got your charging base. So there's most likely gonna be some AI that's gonna help that situation. You're gonna need some technology. All of those things are going to be brand new to the commercial vehicle operator who knows one thing. I need to get my vehicles on the road to make money so that I can make my payments, so that I can bring home the money for my family. They don't want to deal with anything else, and they're not going to change their combustion engine unless there's a service that's going to provide them a wounded to situation. And that is why Ideonomics has been continued, has had its continued success. Yeah, it'd be hard for a, fleet, a fossil fuel fleet operator to dip a toe into the market. Like dipping a toe is what, like 50 units? You know, Amazon is a 900-pound gorilla in the room. They they can throw a lot of cash around. They can make some mistake. If you're a small commercial fleet operator, maybe you've got yourself 500 last-mile vehicles. It's going to be a little bit more challenging. It's going to be a little bit more challenging. Enter Ideonomics. We will get you, procure you that best vehicle at the best financial rate and get you that charging that you need. Make it easy, womb to tomb. That's why we go to Amazon. You know, clickety, clickety, click. Everything just shows up on your doorstep. Fantastic, right? That's that's the services that we're used to right now in society. And as a commercial fleet operator, that's all you want to know. I will buy these expensive vehicles, and I will go out and I will make that investment. But I need it to be easy. Nuts. That's so yeah. you're going to the company's growth will piggyback on the growth of the EV market. Sure, it will. Absolutely. But more importantly, there are two sides of ideonomics. When we started out, started out as a fintech company. It's actually how we got into the uh, into the EV industry. We bid on a commercial contract to be able to use some fintech solutions to attach particular KPIs of uh, of a fleet of buses as an to an ABS package, so that, that that bond indenture would trade. You could always find where that asset was, and you, know, you could peer right in. There's my bus. There it is. So we got into the EV industry that way, but we haven't left our, our fintech solutions behind. In fact, we just made an acquisition of a title company called Timios out in California, a cash flow positive generating company with fintech disruption opportunities where assets that we have in our arsenal are going to help that explode because we think that the fintech and EV worlds are going to collide. They're going to collide very well with the ideas of being able to move ABS packages around, being able to have the data to increase smart city capacities. There's a lot of tentacles in there. And as we grow our cash flow generating assets, we're going to continue to invest in the EV business because it's seeing success. Neat. All right. I'm not as confused as I was before. So what I'm going to do after this is go back to my laptop and do my research again in this context. Commercial EV... Come to say, commercial EV is what's really going to move the needle as it pertains to ESG and more green initiatives. So green finance structures that we already participate in relate right into green EV activities. And I think that's really important for investors to really uh, wrestle with when they're understanding why we're doing what we're doing. So just to, to continue to add to that narrative, we recently picked up uh, an investment into an electric tractor company electric tractor company called select track and they're making last week this week yes uh last week and, and this week so we we increased our investment size uh better for our shareholders as they're able to get some uh, better accounting treatments out of the 20 plus percent 24 percent that uh 
that we have. So the way we account for that under U.S. GAAP accounting, it increases uh, the, the the visibility there, and that allows investors to participate at a, at a much better rate. But my point here is that moving the needle in in commercial EV once again the tractor market is a fantastic market. Most investors will be able to understand that a twenty-five dollars to $45,000 tractor vehicle that's going to last quite a long time, but more importantly, doesn't have the same costs associated with internal combustion engines. Diesel's not really efficient as it pertains to tractors, and small farms and wineries and equestrian um, centers and, and other such properties of the like, there's going to be huge benefits in the electric tractor arena. Interesting. Hadn't thought of it from this perspective, Tony. I thank you for your time today. Trades on NASDAQ, and you can see over Tony's right shoulder, IDEX, IDNomics. Tony is the Senior Vice President of Investor Relations. His email address is at the website, so if you have questions, please contact him directly. As you can see, he is totally immersed in the business plan. <laughs> Tony, it was good to meet thank you. you Pete. Cheers, Peter. It was great. Have a Happy Thanksgiving for me and enjoy the weekend for you, my friend.